So today I'm sharing my top 20 cruise hacks, tips, and tricks. I think I have at least one trick in there for sure. I wanted to narrow it down to about 10, but I just couldn't without having to eliminate some really great things. So I'm gonna have six booking hacks, four communication hacks, and the other 10 will be some pack hacks. I do have something that you probably never heard before. So I'm super excited about it. I'm gonna save that one for later. So be sure to stay tuned for the whole video so you can see this one because it is truly a game changer. Number one, when booking, do so at least over a year in advance or at the very last minute. Now on our last cruise on the Norwegian Epic, we booked on the Monday prior to departure and we got a fantastic deal. Now I also can vouch for booking over 12 months in advance Pricing never seemed to get better when I would watch the rate throughout the rest of the year. And we did pay a little bit more this last time when we couldn't narrow down with our friends a date and we booked about 11 months in advance. So something to keep in mind to get the best rate. Number two is be flexible. You can't have a specific date or time that you want to go because rates can change greatly from week to week, literally from one week to the next week. It can be hundreds of dollars different per person. So if you're flexible, that's how you're going to find, be able to find the best rate. And now what we found from our experience are the best rates seem to be, if you're looking for winter travel in the Caribbean, the best rates seem to be January and May for some reason. So that might be a good place to start. Number three, book the lowest room category you can handle and upgrade later. You can do so for free or at even a reduced cost. So there are so many ways to go about this. And of course it is going to vary from cruise line to cruise line. Gone are the days of walking up to guest services as you board a cruise, ask for a room upgrade and promptly get moved to an upgraded room that they did not fill. The blanket response now is always we are booked to capacity. Now capacity of rooms does not match capacity of how many people are there. So there are always numerous extra rooms. They're just typically not going to tell you that. However, if you book the lowest room category, now this is at least true for Norwegian, they will always send out an email following asking if you wanted to bid on a room upgrade. So I would always say write down what the price difference is. Say if you're going to book an ocean view room uh, because you won't tolerate an inside room, you're going to book ocean view and you're hoping for balcony. Look at what the price difference is when you're actually booking it. So, you know, you don't want to go over that and you may want to bid a number that's in between. See if you might get it. Um, I've also heard of someone having success in asking for a room upgrade change after the ship has already left port. So maybe like on day two, asking if there's another room, I've heard that you can be switched and they will do so at that time. Not a guarantee, but something to think about. So number four, I always say book direct. I love booking direct. I know you get the best pricing. Of course, they're not sharing any commission or profits with another company. So we always get a great rate. We're always offered a lot of different perks that are free to go along with our cruise. And it's very easy to keep an eye on the pricing if it changes, drops, or if other perks are added as time goes on. So book direct. And I always like to do it online and I do it myself, but I have found when I call the 1-800 number for a cruise specialist, they're extremely helpful in figuring out. They can even sometimes give you better rates that they know about or do a little bit of tweaking. We actually called when we thought on our last minute cruise, I went to book and it said it was sold out by the time I had booked. So it appeared that there was only one room left. So I called right away and said, hey, we just tried to book. It's showing that it's sold out. Can we book? And she said, yes, I can absolutely get you into a room. So we were like, okay, that's weird. It says sold out online, but it's probably maybe because they always have, you know, an abundance of rooms left. Number five, don't purchase 
shore excursions through the cruise line. Those prices are inflated. The cruises are looking to make a profit on those excursions and they also have limited selection. And of course we want them to make a profit. That's the point of their business to do so, but that's not the way that you need to purchase. Now there are some assurances that go along with purchasing that way. One of which is you are guaranteed to get back to the boat no matter what happens if there's an issue with your shore excursion that delays you getting back to the ship if you miss the onboard time the ship will not leave without you if you book with a separate company you do so at your own risk and if you miss onboard time we all know what that means you are paying your way to the next port now i have never had a problem booking my own excursions because we don't ever book anything that goes really tight to the onboard time of having to get back on the ship so uh, something to think about and there are a couple different companies for that uh, shoreline being one of them and Viatar I believe is another another good one that you can check out I'll put some links in the comment box below number six do not purchase travel insurance through the cruise line the prices are inflated with minimal coverage so that's not to say do not purchase travel insurance at all although we never have there is a lot of benefits to travel insurance now for the first time I actually went to a website it's called Roomrite. Uh, you go to roomright.com I'll put a link in the description box and I filled out it probably took me five minutes to put in all of my family's information to get a quote and I think it came to about $150 but some really solid coverage now we're just interested in this after seeing some issues that uh, some of the people had getting on the ship and missing the ship when we were at port and we had three fatalities on our last cruise so it kind of makes you rethink because there can be a lot of cost associated if you come across an issue you. So don't do it through the cruise line. Um, the coverage isn't great. It doesn't cover much and people are actually, you know, unfortunately very surprised with how much isn't covered when they try to utilize that coverage. Now for my communication hacks. Okay, so we live in a society now where we need to be in contact with people constantly. So when you're on a cruise ship, that doesn't change. Of course, we look to limit ourselves around vacation, right? So we can communicate less with the outside world, yada, yada. Okay, that may or may not be true for you. So if, let's start with the basics, if you only need to communicate with those on board, because it can be difficult to keep in touch with others in your party if you don't have a way to communicate on your phones on board. We had one of our friends from our group that did not have any type of package, and he searched for his wife and the rest of us for a few hours before he found us. So something to keep in mind. So if you just need the basics, get the onboard app. Now this will always have a messaging program. I think we paid $10 per person to have messaging messenger so that we could message each other on board the ship. Great value when you're comparing to Wi-Fi packages that are well over $100. Number eight, if you want to be able to communicate with those back home, opt for a social media package in lieu of the the full Wi-Fi package because you can still utilize, say, Facebook Messenger to have chats and some pictures back and forth. And you can also use the WhatsApp to be able to do phone calls over the internet. So if you literally just need to communicate back and forth and you don't have the need of checking emails, the social media package is a great savings over the complete Wi-Fi package. Now, number nine, if you do end up purchasing the complete Wi-Fi package, do so before you board the ship at least 24 to 48 hours before boarding you always want to book these extras because you're going to save 10 to 15 percent so don't make the mistake as we did in trying to go back and forth should we get this should we get that and then we didn't decide until we got on the ship and we had to pay more and it's already a lot so we were annoyed with ourselves so it's something that we learned because every dollar counts because it's money that you can use towards something else so number 10, if you do end up purchasing the full Wi-Fi wi package, a great little device to purchase is a travel router that you can use a bridge mode. This is great because you can purchase one Wi-Fi package and several people can connect to that package at the same time. Normally with these packages, you can only have one person logged into the Wi-Fi at a time, but with the travel router in bridge mode, everyone can connect to that unlimited package at the same time. 
So I thought this was pretty great. We haven't purchased one yet, but this will be definitely done for our next cruise. So now on to my pack hacks. These are things that I ensure to bring every single cruise. No matter what, I am not gonna leave without these. So number 11 is seasick products. Now I don't get seasick. I don't think the rest of my family does. Now on our first trip, we didn't really know. We didn't know what to expect. So two things that we always bring with us. One are these sea bands and they look like this and they have they're just little they look like sweatbands and they have these little plastic knobs that are pressure point and you just keep them on your wrist this goes underneath and it shows it on the box where to put them but I have found that during rocky waters sometimes I would feel a little bit uneasy I was never quite sure if it was seasickness or if it was the effects of having the unlimited beverage package but these are great to keep you can reuse them over and over and over which is what we do this box we've never opened these we've tried and we use and we just keep bringing them again you may always hear that ginger is a good relief for motion sickness so what I ended up purchasing was ginger supplements these are super inexpensive it's literally just like hundred percent ginger in here 550 milligrams and these are great for digestion and all kinds of other things so I would just take these before we got on the ship I gave them to my kids um, you can take a couple more if you you feel a little nauseous and I mean you get how many is in? you get a hundred capsules in here and they last forever and it's just this great natural remedy that actually works number 11 bring a cruise ship approved power strip. Now they're banning power strips that have surge protectors on almost all the cruise lines now. So you'll find that if you plug one in to charge your devices, leave the room and your room steward stops in to clean things up or turn down your bed, a lot of times it will be removed and they will confiscate it from you. Uh, apparently they're dangerous so they are no longer allowed so now they sell cruise ship approved without the surge protector and you want to always have some extra outlets because there's usually only a couple in the room and so if you need to charge multiple things at a time and blow dry your hair and heat up your curling iron um, you're gonna want to make sure that you have this option number 13 is a backup battery for your phone at the port and so these are not only backup batteries, this is just one that I have, but the plug pulls right out of it. So you don't have to remember to bring a separate, separate, this is for iPhone, but you don't need a separate lightning cord and you don't have to remember that. It's all connected. This does one full phone charge. So you hate to be on the, off the ship, on the beach, you can't communicate with people if you want to or take videos or pictures because it's been a long day and you've sucked up all the juice in your phone. So always bring a portable battery. Number 14. Now if you're always looking to cut cost as I am and a great easy way to do this is to bring beverages to drink now you can't actually bring beverages a lot of liquids aren't allowed on ships anymore but you can bring water flavor packets there are so many different types available now and those are great to also use on airplanes so you don't have to purchase uh, expensive overpriced sodas or other drinks you can just get free water and pour in a packet and the same goes for on the cruise ship bring what you enjoy to drink I also like to bring uh, hot tea bags because they have very basic ones on the cruise ship but I bring the ones that I enjoy again I use them on the airplane so I'm not purchasing beverages there and of course these are all TSA approved and they can get on a cruise ship because there's no liquid involved. Uh, so what goes along with that is number 15, which is bring your own water bottle. If you don't want to buy a water package and they seem to be getting more and more expensive, I know in Norwegian it's quite costly uh, for a water package. And why not just fill up your bottle at the juice station that's what we would always do they have these really tiny cups there so if you don't bring your own water bottle you're only getting little, little few cups at a time and we would always grab a bunch to take back to our room but it wasn't really efficient and also it was nice to be able to fill up some water to bring onto the ports with us and you can fill it with your or add some of your flavor packets with it so 
Number 16, uh, when you're going to the beach and you're on port, bring your own snorkel set. Now I'm gonna link to one in the description box. I think we found on Amazon, it's like 20 bucks. Why rent them everywhere you go when you can? They pack lightly, they go in your port backpack super easily. So purchase it in advance and bring it with you. And then you have it trip after trip after trip. And that was a big one that we thought of. We're even now gonna start bringing some floaties that we'll get on clearance after the season to where we'll blow them up when we get there. Use them at the beach so that we're not renting um, any of their more expensive floaties and then we'll just leave them behind and it'll still be less money than renting them when we get there. So that's kind of another tip I didn't even have on my list, which I probably should. So number 17, magnet hooks. So if you're familiar with cruise ships, then you know that all of the walls are magnetic, including the doors and all of the rooms are very limited on space. So it's nice to be able to keep organized. You can use the clips with and hang jewelry on them. I thought I had some here, but maybe I don't. Um, you can use the clips to hang jewelry on them and you can, then they have those at the Dollar Tree, but on Amazon they have hooks that actually hold up to 25 pounds. So if you want to hang up bags and backpacks so you're not taking up floor space or precious closet space, these hooks are amazing. And I think they're like 10 bucks or something for, is it 10 of them? I'm not sure but the link will be in the description box. So number 18, towel clips. Nothing is more annoying than bringing your towel, putting it on your lounge chair, especially when it's more in the seat up position and it constantly falls down on you. They sell these clips at the Dollar Tree, which I thought I had some of those here too. I must have cleaned everything up. Oh, I do have some. Okay, some of the Dollar Tree ones, they look like this. They work fantastic. I believe these come in an eight pack for a buck. Just grab them at the Dollar Tree if you want. They have them at Amazon in a rainbow of colors, um, which if you want something cuter, grab them on Amazon. I'll put a link below, but these are great. And if you lose them, they're so cheap. You don't mind having to purchase new ones. Number 19 is a travel scale. This has nothing to do with cruising and everything to do with your flight, but we always know that most airlines now limit you at 50 pounds for your checked luggage and if you go over you're getting charged so we have one of these this hooks on to your luggage like that and then you lift it up and it shows how many pounds you have so that way when we're leaving the cruise and we purchase things and we're getting ready to go we know which luggage has the space or we had friends who didn't have the space so we were able to stop at a tj maxx and get a duffel bag so that she didn't have to have or pay a, a fee to be over the weight limit so last but not least because this is my game changer pack hack for sure and it is activated charcoal. It's kind of hard to see in this one. Activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is what they use at the Poison Control Center to absorb everything that is in the stomach if somebody gets something um, poisonous in them or has something potentially hazardous in them. Activative charcoal is what they use in the hospitals to absorb poisons that get into the body. So if somebody ingests something toxic, part of what they do, aside from pumping your stomach, is fill it with activated charcoal. It's a great absorber, which is probably why you've heard that this product is used in toothpaste to absorb stains. It's used for facial masks to absorb, to absorb to absorb the dirt and the oils and get a really deep clean. This is fantastic. Now I had looked into this when neurovirus was going around trying to find out what would be a fix or a way to avoid neurovirus aside from constantly washing our hands and sanitizing because we do all of that, but it seems to sometimes always slip past and hit one of the kids. So I found out that people with symptoms of neurovirus in their stomach or even food poisoning have taken a couple capsules of this and they were fine. Some people take it proactively to avoid the neurovirus. I can tell you from our personal experience, we had this on hand with us all last winter. We had no pukes among us. 
None. But this being a game changer for cruise ships, we hear that there are outbreaks of diseases from time to time and having this on hand can help even if you would happen to get some food poisoning. And sometimes you're not going to know the difference if you have a neurovirus or you've been affected by food poisoning. So this is my number one pack hack, activated charcoal. This is great to pack. It is great to keep at home and it is a home hack too that you want to have on hand at all times so those are my top 20 uh, cruise hacks I hope these were helpful I'm gonna put as much information down in the description box below about anything I've explained if you have any hacks of your own anything great that I've missed please put your comments any that you have in the description box and as always enjoy your destined journey and thank you for joining me on mine and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you're notified as I upload future videos. As always, enjoy your destined journey and thanks for joining me on mine.